Hello, Homo sapiens. Today we get to talk about natural selection, how species tend to change over time. So though it's attributed to Charles Darwin, the modern idea that species change over time incorporates research from others like Thomas Mathis, Alfred Wallace, and more. So let's dive into this evidence and see what the survival of the fittest is all about. Science rocks. All right, get out your biology notebook and let's take some notes. Think of all those naturalists back in the day keeping journal after journal of all their findings. So copy down these 19 vocabulary words. Remember they go in ABC order like this and just come back later and create your own definitions of these words. Remember to always use your own words. Go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the terms. Natural selection is the process by which species really adapt to their environment. Natural selection leads to evolutionary change when individuals with certain characteristics have a greater survival or reproductive rate than other individuals in the population and pass on those inheritable genetic characteristics to their offspring. So you may have heard of survival of the fittest, organisms with the best traits that keep them alive long enough to produce offspring with those same awesome traits tend to stick around longer than organisms without that trait. So these fish down here are like, ah, sweet, we're camouflaged in our environment and we can live and hide from our predators, whereas these lime green fish up here stand out and are more likely to get eaten. Homologous structures are structures found on one species that have the same basic structure in embryonic origin as those found on other species. All right, so if homologous structures are found on two organisms, the species are related, even if only distantly related. Organisms with homologous structures share a common ancestor. But at some point, mutations probably contributed to the rise of the new species. So the forelimbs of these five mammals are presented here, and the bones are color-coded to allow for easy comparison among these different species. Okay, analogous structures have the same function, but do not share a common origin or a common ancestor, all right? Analogous structures can develop separately in unrelated species, and their presence does not imply that the organisms descended from the same ancestor. The structure and arrangement of analogous structures can also be different, okay? So the wings of a dragonfly and the wings of an eagle both have the same function, right? They're, they're both for flight. However, they are analogous structures because they developed separately over time from two different ancestors. A cladogram is a diagram that shows the phylogeny or genetic heritage of a species. So like this one pictured, it identifies a derived characteristic Okay, here's the characteristics that first appeared at a certain point in history. So the organisms following the trait, all right, following the trait in the diagram are also assumed to have that trait. So for example, let's look at this diagram here. The trait of a backbone emerged before the appearance of the tuna fish, okay? Backbone emerged before the appearance of the tuna fish. So the tuna fish and all of these following organisms in this diagram will also have a backbone. Okay, so if we go up here to amniotic sac, amniotic sac appeared before the snapping turtle. Okay, so the snapping turtle in all of these should have an amniotic sac as well. So members of a species can sometimes become geographically isolated. For example, um, volcanic activity can rise in mountain ranges that split populations of organisms. So as populations that have been separated by these geographic barriers adapt to the different environments due to natural selection, they can gradually develop different traits. 
Often these changes lead to separation or divergence, okay, or divergence of the population. And over time, divergence can lead to speciation, the division of one species into multiple species. Make sure to take a look at this video also talking more about the topic of evolution. Let's do some practice questions. Number one, the nucleotide sequences of four species are shown in the table below. So we have four species here, and here is each of their nucleotide sequences. So select the nucleotide sequences of the two species that are most closely related. All right, think about what would make them most closely related. All right, the species that would be most closely related, okay, would be the species whose DNA are most similar and most closely related. So in this example, the ABX gene sequence of species B differs from species C by only one nucleotide. Okay, so if we look at species B and species C, and if we l go across and follow the codons, go across and follow the codons, it looks like that here is the only difference. Okay, if you compare the other species, you'll notice that there's more differences. So since species B and species C are more closely related than any other species on this table because they only have one difference. We are going to pick B for our answer. All right, number two, the diagram here shows a variety of animals at different stages of development. Okay, so here's the five different animals in their stages of development start up top and then go down for each animal. So which of the following statements is supported by this diagram? Okay, so diverse organisms in the animal kingdom possess similarities in their developmental stages. I mean, look at that. Overall, these similarities are more pronounced during the earlier stages of development, okay, than in the later stages of development. So if we go through the answer choices and look at C, it's saying there are similarities in the developmental stages of different organisms in the animal kingdom. Number three, examine the phylogenic tree below. What does the tree imply about the pea fowl and the field mice? So go ahead and pause it, look over your choices, and see what you think. Okay, so each new species that appears is represented by a branched line. All right, in this, only one organism down here is represented initially, right? This early vertebrate. Vertebrate means it had a backbone. So, but four, these four up here, these four organisms are shown as descendants of the original organism. So, a pea fowl and a field mice descended from a remote, okay, it's not, an, it's not a common uh, recent ancestor. It's from a remote common ancestor, the early vertebrate species. So we're going to go with A for this one. Number four, a cladogram is a branching diagram that represents the suggested ancestry of different organisms based on the presence of unique traits. A scientist discovers a new organism that has paired legs and mammary glands. The offspring of this organism developed within the uterus, so amniotic sac, and are connected to the uterine wall by a placenta during fetal stages. So what species on the cladogram would the newly discovered organism be most closely related to? Okay, so these little marks along the bottom represent the relative time at which these specific traits appeared. So an organism that emerges higher up the cladogram will possess the traits of that um, organism below it unless those traits were lost due to adaptation. So what that means is paired legs traits appeared here. So these organisms higher up, meaning bullfrog and all of these, should have paired legs unless they have adapted in some way. 
All right, so mammary glands appeared here. So these two organisms should have mammary glands unless they have adapted in some way. So based on this cladogram, an organism that has paired legs, okay, would be all of these, but it also needs mammary glands. So now we're down to two, but then it talked about the placental birth. So now we're, we're just down to the monkey. So this one that they're talking about would be most closely related to A, the monkey. Number five, holy moly. I put this one on here because it is super long. It has a table and everything. So when you are answering questions like this, take a breath, take your time. It's worth it, okay? So let's go through this. Number five, severe flooding in an area caused a population of minnows to become split between two separate ponds. Prior to the separation, the male minnows all had a moderate number of spots, okay? Following the separation, the first pond was filled with larger fish that fed on minnows. So male minnows with fewer spots were better able to avoid detection by predators. The minnows in the second pond, however, had very few predators, and the female minnows in this pond preferred to mate with males that had the most spots. After many generations, the two minnow populations genetically diverged, becoming two different species that could no longer interbreed. So, which of the following statements best explains why the two minnow populations became separate species? All right, and you can check this table out here with the fish species talking about the original species with the average number of spots, four to six. The new species one with the average number of spots, zero to two. And the new species two with the average number of spots, a lot, eight to 10. All right, pause it, look over your answer choices and see what you come up with. Okay, so there's different selective pressures that were acting upon the two minnow populations, leading to an increase in genetic variation in the formation of these two new species. So over time, populations of organisms change to best fit their environment. When a species is exposed to new environmental conditions, the formation of new species can result. So if a species is split between two different environments, it's possible for two new species to form because of those different selective pressures acting on the separated populations. So if we look at our answer choices, that best matches up with A. So after you have mastered everything about the evidence of species change and know everything you need to know about natural selection, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment explaining all of this.